This is Twit. Now, this is interesting um, because we've got a lot more information now. Um, we talked, it was a couple of months ago uh, in July when uh, Karsten Knoll demonstrated the bad USB exploit, essentially. I mean, basically, he put into certainly this podcast's uh, communal knowledge the fact that some number of USB devices have rewritable firmware. And that's a bad thing because, you know, you just you look at the USB device. It looks like a thumb drive. We assume that all it is is passive storage. But in fact, it's got a microcontroller in it. And now we know a lot more. What happened is that two other security researchers last week at the DerbyCon uh, hacker conference revealed their research. Um, and we've talked about Adam uh, uh, Caudill before. So Adam Caudill and Brandon Wilson demonstrated that they had followed uh, in Karsten's footsteps. And unlike Karsten, who has never published anything, he demonstrated his stuff just to sort of hopefully stir the industry to clean up its act well, these guys, Adam and Brandon, decided, you know, uh, it's been a few months. Nothing apparently has happened. We're going to turn the heat up a little bit. So they put their entire exploit kit up on GitHub, all documented, all open source. Oh, that's nice. So what's, in so what's interesting is that for anyone who's interested in playing with this, I'm not obviously promoting this for nefarious actors, but... We, it, is, it is interesting to know more. So, for example, we know that the, that the USB drives which can be attacked are based on a, I guess you pronounce it Fison, P-H-I-S-O-N. Fison is one of the largest Taiwanese-based suppliers of USB thumb drives. And I'm sure they're, you know, relabeled. And in fact, I know they are because, for example, the Patriot 8 gig Supersonic Express is one of one that is vulnerable or exploitable. The uh, Patriot Stellar 64 gig uh, Fison, Kingston's Data Traveler 3.0 uh, T111 8 gig drive, Silicon Power Marvel M60 64 gig drive and Toshiba's Trans Memory MX Black 16 gig drive and you know probably many many more. So um, their kit uh, you ha uh, is you know they just built this not necessarily to be widely used but in order to sort of create some foundation. So for example they they built it around uh, .NET 4.0. So you have to have that installed in a Windows machine. Uh, they use Visual Studio 2012 Express, which is a free download from Microsoft. The Express versions of, of Visual Studio are. Um, there's something called the Small Device C Compiler, which is a it's a it's a an open source C compiler used for, as it sounds, small devices, meaning various microcontrollers. Among them is the 8051, which of course is a for it's been an Intel standard, which I think Intel is no longer supporting, but it just sort of it it acquired uh, <laughs> not not, not self-awareness, but critical mass in the industry. <laughs> so like many people, although self-awareness right, would be fun, yeah, that would be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we'll have that we'll have that in in the next conference. Um, and so uh, anyway, it's a it's a a Harvard architecture for banks of i think it's eight registers per bank it's a little eight bit microcontroller but that's what this company uh fison uses and that's what these guys wrote and and altered the firmware for so the, they they consider themselves white hats i mean they're for example so so they wanted to clarify what they did and so in adam's companion blog, he said, okay, what did we release? We released a patch to demonstrate the feasibility of creating a hidden partition on a USB thumb drive. So that's there. 
the the you know so if somebody were interested in doing that for example for their own purposes they could get any of these drives and or check whether any drives they have may be already workable there is a utility an exe that they provide which allows you to stick in a thumb drive and it'll poke at it to see whether it's compatible with their firmware and then you could you know play games they also implemented um, what they called a password bypass some of these drives the firmware itself supports password protection what they did was they they created a firmware modification such that it it won't defeat the password if it's already there but if you were to modify the firmware first then it essentially neuters the subsequent application of a password that would otherwise have been supported by the firmware so again they're 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 trying to demonstrate they, they, they were sort of like trying to walk a fine line. They, they were demonstrating alterations to thumb drive firmware that does interesting things, but, you know, deliberately trying not to hurt anybody. For example, they explicitly said what we did not release. And a Adam wrote, we did not release self-replication. There's no self-replication code anywhere, he writes, while it's possible that it could be done, and we've talked about how to do it, it won't be released here. He said, I am confident that we, Brandon and I, could build a system that would infect PCs, then infect a significant percentage of thumb drives, and then infect other PCs. But, he says, but, and this is a big but, what we released doesn't make that easier in any significant way. Your average script kitty will never be able to do it. There are only a small number of people. I think he underestimates that, but, we'll, but, but he wrote, there's only a small number of people that would be able to do the work needed to pull that off. Those people could already do it before we released what we did. He said, the threat of this happening is the same as it's always been. So, you know, they're obviously sensitive to claims that they're escalating. And I would, I would argue a little bit. I would say, you know, the more of this kind of work that's out there, the, the, it, it facilitates more than if it weren't there. It feels and like they're just they're, kind of showing off. There's no real value. Is there to publishing this? So... So Do we learn anything position, from it? Um, yeah, I, I, I think maybe it keeps it in the air. And what and, and he, he ends by saying that that what we're hoping for is that manufacturers will add uh, code signing there to prevent future modifications. So it's and kind of like fire sheep. It's like well, let's set the whole thing on fire and then they'll have to do something. Yeah, I mean, and and, and he also rec he acknowledges, um, I don't remember now if it's on, on GitHub or in his blog posting, but but somewhere he says, it's, it's clear that all of these devices are already out in the world. So if the change were made tomorrow and who knows if it's even ever going to be made, then if it were made, it would still take a decade for like all of the existing drives to fill up and die or go away or become obsolete. So essentially, we, you know, we have a problem. And uh, uh, anyway, so uh, again, I'm responding to sort of overwrought press stories saying, you know, oh my God, you know, bad, bad USB is back and now it's public. It's like, yeah, okay. Um, and essentially what Adam is, has written is saying we were curious, so we poked at it and we were able to do it too. And I guess his point is it is reproducible. It's not difficult. And by us doing this, we really haven't changed anything because, I mean, and he is right. You, you, you need to be a, you know, be able to write 80, uh, 8051 assembly language or I get, or C, I guess, 
uh, you know, but but disassemble the firmware, reverse engineer it, figure it out, make modifications, and then move forward. So it, it's a project, but certainly not beyond you know state level actors. That would be trivial for them. Mm.